Hello dear students, in my first video, I have already discussed the theory part of arithmetic progression and introducing yourself with the geometric progression. But in this video, today I will discuss some important examples from arithmetic progression so that you can get a deep concept or you can uh, clear your concept about arithmetic progression. So let's go for first example. See the first example. Question number one has given that the fifth and thirteenth term of an EP are sixteen and twenty-eight respectively. Find AP. Okay, this is the first question. In my first video, I told you that if first term and common difference for any arithmetic progression is known to you then any question related to arithmetic progression you have to attempt okay so now our first target is to find out the first term and common difference okay to compute the first term and uh, common difference first we assume the first term be a and common difference denoted by d okay right okay for first problem let first term be a and c d stands for common difference equal to d. Okay, we assume we take first term a and common difference d. Next, what are given? Fifth term and thirteenth term are given. Okay, we take the first term a and common difference of the arithmetic progression. Then, according to our assumption, what will be the fifth term and what will be the thirteenth term? Actually, fifth term is denoted by d five. Okay, this this is given that. Term number five equals to sixteen, and according to uh, and six uh, thirteen term that means D thirteen equals to twenty. Okay, according to our assumption, what will be the fifth term? Fifth term A plus five minus one into D. We use the formula. We use the formula. There are a formula to find out the nth term. That P n equals to a plus n minus one into d. This this was the formula to find out the nth term of the arithmetic progression. Okay. So if we simplify this, then we get a plus four d equals to sixteen. This is the first equation. Okay, this is the equation, and again, similarly from second equation, d thirty will be a plus thirty minus one into d. This is equal to twenty eight. Imply that a plus twelve d. This is equal to twenty. Okay. Okay. Our target now is to find out the value of a and b. If a and b we have, then we can generate that arithmetic progression. Okay. So this is the linear equation of a and b, and this is also another linear equation of a and b. So we may use to solve these two equations. Suppose that this is our first equation and this is our second equation. We may use. To solve these two equations, there are so many ways, like as substitution method, elimination method, cross multiplication method, method. So you have to use any one method. Okay, now we apply. I am using the elimination method. Okay, if we subtract a, a, if we subtract equation number one and equation number two, then we get. Then equation number one is given a plus four d equals to sixteen, and equation number two is given a plus 
12 is equal to 28. If we subtract, this sign will be changed, this will be changed, and this is also. Then A cancel, and this will be minus 8D equals to minus 12. Implies that D equals to and minus minus cancel 12 by A cancel by 4 3 2 that means D equals to 3 by 2 now if we put the value of D in any one of the equations then we get the value of A ok ok next if we put the value Then we get the value of A. Okay. We put in 1. Okay. Then A will be A plus. So we, do, we put the value of B in the first equation. Then we get the value of A. That means first term. Okay. A plus 4 into D means 3 by 2 equals to 16. In times that, I cancel by 2. And after simplification, this will be A equals to 10. Here, yeah. so a equals to 10 and b equals to 3 by 2. So a means first term. Already we computed first term 10 and common term equals to 3 by 2. Then what will be the progression? Hence, easily you can calculate the progression. Hence, A B here. Here first term that is 10. If we add in first term plus common difference of 3 by 2, then we get the second term. Common 10 plus. If we add in the common difference to first term, then third term and so on. That is 10 plus 10 common. This will be 11 by 11 and half. Okay, and this will be 13 and half. And so on. This is our AP. Understand? Okay. Let's go for second question. This is the very important question for the uh, ICSC students. Okay. And this is the ICSC level question. Okay. Read the second question. Yeah. Second question is. Read the second question. How many terms of the series 22 plus 18 plus 14 plus 10 plus 12 must be added to get some 64? Okay. How many terms required? Actually, the question is how many terms required to get the amount 64? Okay. This is first term, second term, third term. This type of how many terms required to get the amount 64. This is the question. Okay. So we can solve this. First, we verify that this series, actually, this is series, this series form or this type of series follows AP or Z. Here, how can I check? 18 minus 20. That means minus 4. 40 minus 80. This will be also minus 4. So to get the next term, we add in minus 4 with the previous. Okay. So this is follows AP. Arithmetic progression. With common difference minus 4. So right for second term question. The given series, first thing we are at the given series follow it with first term A equals to 22. Here first term 22 and 
common difference d equals to minus 4. Clear? Oh, we are very clear. Now the question is how many terms needed to get the around 64. First we assume that let the n terms here n small n. Okay, I know that sum of n term is 64. That means according to question, sum of n terms is divided by Sn. Sn equals to 64. Now put the formulas for Sn. Formula for Sn what? n by 2 into 2a plus n minus 1 into d equals to 64. Okay, put the value. Here n is unknown. Our target is to find out the value of n. Okay. Here a and d is known. So put the values of a and d. n by 2. 2a will be. Here a equals to 22. So 2a will be. 44 plus n minus 1 into d means minus 4 equals to 64. Okay, next calculate. If we simplify this, then
Okay. How can this possible? See the second part of the question. Explain the double answer. How, why we get the double answer? Okay. See the example. That first term is positive and common difference D is negative. So terms will be decreased. Okay. After the fourth term, when after fourth term, you get 64. Very good. But if we consider the after fourth term 64, if you consider fifth term, sixth term, seventh term, and eighth term, if you consider this term, then you see that this term, addition value of this last fourth term must be zero, since they will be negative. Okay. Actually, the terms will be balanced. That's why we get two answer of n. This is the answer. Okay. Next. Okay. Next question. Next example. This is also for IC student. IC and ICC student. This is a very important term. This type of term uh, always like to give you example. I uh, give you example. Sorry. See the question. The sum of three numbers in 80 is 12 and the sum of their squares is 56. Find the numbers. According to question, there are three terms which are in 80. Okay. Their sum is given and sum of their squares also given. Okay. So first we consider that three numbers which are in 80. So we can consider, we can assume the three terms of A B as first term A. We choose the three terms in such a way so that three terms must be are in A B. Okay. So we can choose in this way A, A plus B and A plus 2. But if we choose these three terms in this way, then calculation will be very large, and our target is to simplify this, simplify this problem in simple way. So we can choose these three terms by each technique. Okay, what is that technique? We choose the three numbers which are in AP for every problem. If it is given that sum of three terms which are in AP, then we will choose the three terms in such a way if we add that three terms then easily one variable remove. If we take three terms as this way then if we add in these three terms then this will be 3a plus 3d. Okay. So two variables exist here a and b. But we take in such a way so that one will be really uh, removed. So if we take these three terms as suppose that first term A, sorry, suppose that middle term A and A plus D, so A minus T, A minus D. If we take that three terms in this way that A minus D, A and A plus D. Note that if we add in these three terms, then D cancel. So easily we can calculate the value of A as well as these three terms also are in AP. Note that to get first two second, we add D. Okay. And again for again for second to third also we add D. So these three terms easily are in AP. So we can take three terms in this point. And if we take that three terms in this way, then our calculation will be very easy. So let the three terms which are in AP be this. Right on there. Let A minus T, A plus G are three terms. Okay, so we can take 
this as the three terms of AP. So that will let A minus T, A, A plus T are three terms of AP. Then according to our question, sum of these three terms are given. That the then according to question, A minus T, this is first term plus second term plus third term. This is given that what? Two terms. Okay. So it implies that that A minus T, A a plus t equals to 12 can be cancelled and this will be 3a that means 3a equals to 12 we plus that a equals to 4 so is it we get the value of 1 variable according to second given that sum of squares is 56 so according to second given what sum of them square that means a minus g square plus second term square plus third term square this will be 56 okay if you put the value of a in this second given then this equation will be the equation of only b Okay, so now we solve for D and we get the value of T. If value of A and value of D will have, then easily we calculate with three terms. Okay, so let's go for calculation. We have put the values of A. Then this will be 4 minus D. Whole square. A square, that is 4 square, that is 16. Plus 4 plus D. Two plus two, fifty-six. Okay, next. Okay. Four minus t. Expand in a minus t term. A minus t whole square form plus. Then this will be sixteen minus h d plus d square plus sixteen. And 4 plus d term is equal to 16 plus h d plus d square. This equals to 56. Next. Here we a d cancel. Okay. And this will be 48 plus 2 d square equals to 56. So 2 d square equals to 56 minus 48 so that d square equals to 4 therefore d equals to d square equals 4 plus minus 2 ok d equals to plus minus 2 so why d equals to 2 here there are two terms d equals to either 2 or minus 2. If we consider d equals to 2, then we get the number.
Next, see the second problem. Find the sum of one five plus nine plus dot 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 one zero one. Okay. Observe that this series are in eighty. Why? To get the first second, add in four. Second term, third term, we get add by four. So this is a arithmetic series with first term one and common difference four. Okay. So first thing here that the given series follows if if first term.
will take them as a minus g a a plus b but when it goes down in the case of four terms what do you do okay in the case of four terms we take them as a minus 3b a minus b comma a plus g comma a plus b you can check these four terms are in ap okay why we take these terms in this way if we add in these four terms then the variable d must be removed okay so if we take four terms in this way then our calculation will be very easy okay okay a minus 3 to a minus d and this is also follow uh, arithmetic progression with common difference 2d noting this and 2d 2d clear yeah. so this is the very interesting and important also now we are going to discuss when high terms sum of five terms of an ap is given then how can we take that five term we can take first we take middle term okay middle term is there are five terms so in middle position we take a and in left hand side we will decrease ddd and right hand side we will add ddd then this is the first term then in the case of e minus 3 plus this give us when three terms in the concept of three terms so again if we subtract then this will be e minus 10 this will be a plus 2d so when the question is in five terms sum of five terms of a b is given so we can take that five terms in this way a minus 2d a minus 3 a a plus d a plus 2d this is like similar as five terms understand okay Okay, next question. This is also important question for ICC and IC students. How many numbers are between 500 and 1000 divisible by 30? How many numbers are there? Actually, this is 500. Other than this is how many numbers between 500 and 1000 are there, which are divisible by 30? Okay. This is 500 and this is 1000. Then how many number between 500 and 1000 which are divisible by 30? This is the question. Okay. So now how can we solve? Actually, this problem solve by help of arithmetic progression. We can solve this. Okay. So first we have to find out what will be the first number after 500 which is divisible by 30 how can we calculate that number okay so you first divide 500 by 30 then what you can do that one one only now eight one only subtraction will be six from six so If we divide it 500, then there are 38 times complete 30 and extra term that is divided is 6. Then what list number should be added with 500 to get complete divisible by 30? To get the number which is complete divisible by 30. And to give it some rule, first we check. That had 
in 500 there are 38 times completely 13 and extra 6 is there ok so if we in 500 this so 500 can be written as 13 into 38 plus 6 if this step of 6 this will be 13 then ultimately this number divisible by 13 so how much falling short to complete in a 13 there are 7 so if we add in 7 with 500 then we get the number which is divisible by 30. So after 500, 507 is the first number which is divisible by 30. Clear? In similar concept, we find out the last number before 1000 which is divisible by 30. Same technique you have done that. But there is a twist. How? We divide by 13 in the So in thousand, there are seventy six times complete thirty and extra number they are twelve. So we have to find out the previous number. Okay, previous number. So here in thousand, there are complete seventy six times thirty and extra twelve. So we go back thirty. Okay, so if we subtract 30 from the 1000, then we get, sorry, then 12, subtract 12, then we get the previous number of 1000, which is divisible by 30, so this will be 1, This is the last number which is divisible by 13 and 507 is the first number after 500 which is divisible by 13. What is the second number? If we add in 13 with this number, then we get the second number that means 520 will be the second number which is divisible by 13 and so on. If we add in 13, 13, 13, 13 then we get all the numbers. Okay. So clearly, this problem can be solved by concept of arithmetic progression with first term 507 and this we may take this as first term A and the common difference will be 30. Okay. So now the question is which how many terms are there? We have to find out which number of term which term of this 80 is 988 if 988 is 10th term then between 500,000 there are 10 number of term if 988 will be the 20th term then there are 20 terms 20 numbers which is divisible by 13 and between 500,000 yes so write down the first number after 500 which divisible by 13 